Today, I'm going to predict the IGCSE 0607 Maths Paper 2 paper. Here are my predictions. Stay tuned. So today, I'm going to predict the IGCSE 0607 Maths Paper 2. So I've been doing some research over the last couple of days. So I've been looking at the past papers from the last two or three years, looking for some kind of trend, looking for a pattern that can help you revise and really identify which topics that you want to focus on. So I'm going to get straight to it. Again, please watch until the end of the video. I've got some extra tips as well for you to really succeed in that IGCSE paper too. Okay, so let's get certain with the most important, which is the almost certain part of paper two. So this is what I've identified as topics that are almost certain to appear. And um, before I get started, you'll see on the right hand side, I have this column here for appearance last two years. So this also includes the recent papers in November, as well as the May, June papers. And this includes all time zones as well. So all three time zones are included in my analysis here. Um, with the paper four, it's a little bit more nuanced because paper two comes before paper four. Um, the first thing to highlight is that with some of these points, uh, right at the top here, they appear 15 in 12 papers. So that means on average, there is more than one question uh, per paper. So for example, indices, sometimes there can be two questions, not one. So keep that in mind. Um, I've identified as the most important topic, and this has changed slightly from my prediction video I did in 2019. Again, please click the link above if you want to see what that was and see how that's changed for 2021. So my first topic here to focus on is factorizing with algebra. So working with algebraic fractions, expanding and factorizing linear and quadratic equations. And you must know how to do what's called splitting the term. So when you come to factorize quadratics, um, when I've taught this, I do this more of a sort of a trial and improvement approach. But for this exam, you do need to know how to split the terms. So how to find those middle terms and then put into double brackets afterwards. If you're not sure how to do that, then just type in quadratic splitting the term into YouTube or Google, and then you'll find plenty of videos out there on that. Okay, but that is something to highlight with this paper. You need to know how to split the term specifically. This has appeared 15 and 12 papers. Um, one of the topics I talked about in 2019 is still a very relevant topic for paper two, and that is working with indices and powers. So working with fractional negative powers and also with standard forms. So being able to add, subtract, divide and multiply standard form calculations. And they design the questions in such a way they want you to work with standard form. One of the mistakes I've seen is converting it into a normal number, adding, subtracting, etc., and then converting it back. That simply takes too long on a paper two. You've only got 45 minutes, so you need to be able to work with standard form confidently. Uh, something that surprised me in my analysis as I was looking through is the circle theorems and angle calculations in general. So I put exterior interior angles into this category as well. I was surprised really how many circle theorems questions there were on paper two compared to two years ago. This is something I've moved up into my almost certain category that even if it doesn't appear on paper two, and I think it will personally from my analysis that I've done, it will then certainly appear in paper four. So this is a topic you must know. So cyclic quadrilaterals, alternate segment theorem, intersecting chord theorem, you must be comfortable with working these out. Uh, chord geometry is also a top topic, as I said in two years ago. But one of the focuses, foci I want to talk about here is perpendicular bisectors. I've seen so many perpendicular bisector questions, and generally we're talking four or five marks on a paper two, which is a big proportion of your paper two. Five out of 40 is 12.5%. So make sure you know how to do that. Included in that topic is finding the midpoints between two coordinates, finding the gradient, and finding the distance, so using Pythagoras. Very, very important. Uh, also a topic that has come more and more important in the last couple of years is rearranging formulae or making X the subject. So this can be in a variety of different ways. They could write it as a fraction, they could write it with a squared in there, with a cubed in there, but you need to know how to rearrange formulae and making X a subject, um, particularly the AA star end, um, having an expression which you need to put back into a single bracket 
is often seen as well. So make sure you revise that. General equation solving is also important. So I put inequalities equations and simultaneous equations into one group here. As you can see, they've appeared together uh, 10 in 12 papers. So again, almost certain to appear in some way. So make sure you can solve simultaneous equations. Generally speaking, they are done uh, using the elimination method. So generally substitution is not required. Um, solving inequalities, making sure you know how to do that as well. And last of all, logarithms. This has appeared more and more. So in my previous video, I did talk about logarithms in 2019. I can only say it's become more important to be able to simplify one logarithm in particular. So often they give you, say, 3 log 2 minus log uh, 2 log 3, and they want you to simplify it into one particular log. That's the most common kind of logarithm question on paper 2. Generally, it sticks to paper 2, not paper 4, but occasionally does appear on paper 4 as well. These are the almost certain category. If you're starting your revision and you only have six weeks from when this video is uploaded, then you start with these topics and make sure that you know them very, very well. Okay, and now we go into the often category. So once you've gone through those topics are almost certain, these are ones that you simply need to revise as well. As we can see, these are appearing about 50% of the time on the papers. So out of these topics that you see here, probably three or four will turn up approximately. Um, one thing I've noticed on recent papers the last couple of years is these variation proportion questions. So y is directly proportional to x or y is inversely proportional to x cubed, for example, things like this. So you do need to be able to have how to do this. I do actually have a video where I go through this, so make sure you check that out on direct proportion. And this has become more and more common. So this is something that's tending or trending in these paper twos. So make sure you do that. Surds has dropped down into the often category. So it's become a little less often on the paper twos, but still six out of 12. So do not underestimate it by any means. And you need to do the surd calculations, simplifying, rationalizing, adding and multiplying surds. So standard questions, uh, still important, not as important as it was, but still you, you need to practice that skill. One thing that has become much more prevalent in the last couple of years is non-calculated trigonometry. So they really do want you to learn those exact values. So if I ask you what sine 30 is, or I ask you what sine 60 is, or cos 45, you need to know those off by heart. Whether you use the hand method, whether you just learn them off by heart, whether you know those two basic triangles, you do need to know this. Um, sometimes they put some trigonometry graphs in there as well. Uh, but generally speaking, what I've seen is a right angle triangle and they get you to use uh, values of cos, values of sine that you should know to help you work out a side or an angle. So make sure you have that. Um, in addition to that, also volume and area in terms of pi. So they're moving some of those volume area questions onto the paper too, uh, where they get you to work with the formula on the formula sheet and get you to write the answer in terms of pi. So be aware that's becoming slightly more popular. One thing I was also surprised to see was averages. They've asked a few questions on averages uh, in a worded problem style, but not a kind of direct question, more of uh, the mean of a set of numbers is 12, mean of another set of numbers is 14, you know, work out some of the numbers from that um, collection. So make sure you do revise averages and particularly the worded problems. That would be my advice there. And then speed distance time calculations. This was quite popular about five years ago, five, six years ago, and it's now sort of come back into fashion. So this includes changing units, so going from particularly meters per second to kilometers per hour and working backwards through that as well. That's important. And knowing your speed distance time triangle and being able to work with that. As you can see, appeared five out of 12 times. So it is something to work with. OK, and this now goes into the sometimes category. Um, what you'll notice with this sometimes category is that most of these topics appear on a paper four, generally speaking, but every you know, couple of years or so, every one paper in six or one paper in five, they'll put this onto a paper two as well. Uh, vectors is the first thing to mention, um, particularly finding the magnitude of a vector. So be aware if you want to find the magnitude of a vector. Sometimes they'll write the notation like this using the modulus sign. 
sometimes they'll use the word magnitude. I've noticed that on the November 2020 paper. So make sure you know how to do that. That's an easy couple of marks you can get using Pythagoras. Um, occasionally they do have relative frequency and probability calculations as well. So I've seen that from time to time. Generally probability questions are done on paper form, but they might put a small relative frequency question in there. Uh, Venn diagrams and set notation. Again, that will be tested in some way, usually on the paper four for an extended question, but can be on paper two as well. So this is a topic Venn diagram set notation will come up probably in some way on paper two or paper four. So be aware of that. And finally, some work with cumulative frequency statistics calculations. Again, generally a paper four topic because you can use your GDC to work a lot of things out statistics wise. But they may want you to draw a graph. Notice histograms has been taken off the course now, so you are then more likely to have a cumulative frequency question instead. So that probability, quite suitable in this topic, the probability of cumulative frequency has gone up because histograms has been taken off. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to mention here, which gets overlooked, is make sure you do revise some of these easier topics, particularly number topics, and then not to be underestimated. Um, for example, fraction calculations, make sure you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. That's very, very important. I didn't mention it on the slide here, but bid mass calculations, occasionally question one, question two, they'll put a bid mass question there. And you'd be surprised how many people lose one mark, lose two marks, where they really don't need to. Divide by a given ratio, I've seen it a few times on there. Again, that's straightforward two marks that you can get easily. Uh, percentage calculations that do not require a calculator. Um, very occasionally they might do reverse percentage change, but with easy numbers, so when you're dividing by 0 0.8, for example, something like that. And my very last thing to mention, I've seen it, I think, twice, uh, highest common factor and lowest common multiple. So what they'll do there is they'll give you, say, a number, so 132 is equal to this times this, and they give you 100 and something else equals times this by this, and then working with the breakdown of prime factors to then find something else. That has occasionally appeared, and it's something to revise. You want to be fully prepared for the exam. Right, this is then my IGC predictions for paper two. Again, the paper four will be coming out as well. So make sure you revise those topics, particularly the almost certain category. If you want to make sure that you can do a good core of the paper, you know, a good 50% of the paper, then make sure you've covered those topics and also these topics as well. This will help you focus your revision for the IGCC Paper 2 on the 067 course. All right, if you've got any comments, uh, if you want me to give you any more advice, then that's absolutely fine. Just write a comment down below. I'll be happy to help. Okay, bye-bye for now.